Hi guys, this is the second video of the new features of uh, Grand Designer 1.2. So I will just uh, look at the new tab features that you have now. It allows you to basically spawn uh, buildings, landmarks, um, rock formation, etc. on the surface of the, the planet. So. Um, just have to toggle that and you see where they will be spawned and you have to choose um, a file uh, it's a texture file that is defining the object so you can find that in the features uh, directory and here i have the full uh, set of uh, features um, by default you only have three of them and if you want the full set it's a separate uh, dlc so, for instance, um, I will take uh, this one. Uh, it's available in the, in the tree by default. Uh, so the colors looks pretty odd, but it's basically because it's how they are made. Uh, it's a RGBA texture where you have uh, in the red channel, you have the eight. Uh, in the green and blue you have the color and the color at night uh, so you can have emissive color basically and the alpha channel is the the cutout is the the shape of the uh, the object or the structure so i will take this one so it's kind of uh, huge uh, fans um, if you want to see more clearly the relief then you can go to the shader and change the amplitude and the tessellation like that okay so once you've done that you can go back to the features tab and we can uh, basically fine tune everything um, you can see on the feature source that you have a subdivision is uh, this is where when you want to have uh, different models spawned on your surface you can basically split your texture in a 2x2 or 3x3 or 4x4 uh, subdivision and with different models um, we have some uh, samples when you have the, the DLC like uh, these two ones you see you have four different models so you just uh, select this one and select the subdivision to or whatever you you want uh, convert to linear it depends on the model you're doing uh, sometimes you need to convert to linear sometimes not so you just basically have to, to check and you, you will it will change the, the dynamic of uh, of the object um, it really depends how they were made uh, and so uh, you just adjust depending on your texture you just check what's best for you we'll go to um, well probably th this one is better here okay um, <clears throat> so you have the features density it's basically how many of these uh, features you want on the surface of the planet so the more you put the the more you will have uh, smaller ones and the less the bigger they, they will be. Uh, you have also a regular distribution. Um, it's basically how random things will be. Uh, this is quite visible when you have a pretty large number of, uh, of features, like this one. So you, you can see they are, they are disposed pretty regularly on the on the surface and depending on the features chance you will have uh, less or more of them if you uncheck the regular distribution it will be completely random like this one and so it's more chaotic that way it's really it depends really on what you want to do um, so let's make maybe something more uh, regular depending on the the number the density you have 
you will have some uh, pretty nice regular pattern or some that will look more chaotic it's really up to you to to have something uh, choose the, the number that makes make it look uh, fine so for instance 256 is working pretty well let's say something like this Uh, you can also change the radius of the object, the features, and also the randomization. The higher the randomization, the, uh, the bigger the chance of having smaller objects. So if you put randomization to zero, they will have all that radius of a year. Uh, and the radius distribution is the same as the craters. If you increase that, you have more chance of having smaller um, uh, smaller features and uh, less uh, more sparse ones uh, for the big ones uh, and you have then the random angle it's not really useful over here but it's it's basically to randomize the orientation of the of the feature if you want everything completely regular and well aligned just uh, put the random angle to zero then you have to choose how to blend that to your uh, your terrain uh, you can uh, invert the the, the eight uh, mask can be useful uh, and you can say also I want to keep the original uh, relief or I want to basically spawn the object on top of the relief and uh, um, remove everything under it then you can choose the blending type you have addition like uh, like it is now you have subtraction so if I do uh, subtraction and invert I can have uh, some uh, fans that are buried in the in the ground then you have uh, add sub add sub is basically adding stuff that are above uh, grayscale 0 0.5 and uh, subtracting subtracting the colors that are under uh, 0 0.5 then you have uh, minimum and maximum so it's basically taking the minimum value between the terrain and the feature or the maximum value. You can adjust the how, uh, how deep they are or how above the, the ground they are with the eight offset over here. So if I just uh, have negative value, it, they will be buried into the ground. And if I have positive value, they are above the ground. Here it's minimum, so uh, you don't see it, but you don't see them. But uh, with maximum, it's more obvious. You get uh, you get the idea. Then you have the blending adjustment. It's basically how sharp the blending will be. It really depends on the alpha channel of your uh, feature. Then you have the Altitude range, it's basically where you want to spawn your object. If you want to spawn them only on top of uh, mountains, then you can increase this and you will have only stuff on the highest part of the planet. Or do the opposite and keep only object in the, in the valleys over here. Then you have the 8 scale, it's basically taking a random 8 between those two values. So if you want everything to have the same value, just uh, stick those two sliders together. And uh, if you reduce, there will be more flat. If you increase, there will be more in uh, relief. Like that. Okay, um, then you have the water limit uh, sharpness and water limit uh, bias. It's uh, just uh, useful when you have water. So I will 
just add the water over here like this and so go back to the feature step the water limit bias will basically uh, change the the way they are blend when in uh, water so you you change basically the the limit of the blending here even if they are completely removed you you have still that uh, platform it's basic it's because i've added uh, an offset and it's in maximum mode so if i put uh, the add mode it will be more uh, okay you see like this stuff into the water will be buried more or less depending on the, the limit and the sharpness you use you can completely remove stuff uh, close to the water with that also it's pretty useful for uh, for cities uh, for instance so you can avoid having half of the city in the in the water okay so uh, i will remove the water like this and now the last part is the visual part you have the albedo so it's how you will color the the feature so here you will use a ramp and the ramp will be basically remapped from the the green channel of your uh, texture so um here, if I take uh, a very colorful thing like this, you see it really depends on how it has been painted in the texture, but uh, it allows you to have uh, completely different painted uh, stuff over here. So like this. I will do a render to, to check how it's looking. Okay, so better. Okay, so you have that for the albedo. And you have also the light color, which is used for the, the injection of the color in the night time or in the albedo or in the water, but for self-emissive uh, part. So by default, it's injected in the night light. So if I change the lighting, you see you have the, the light around the fans that are quite visible. <coughs> and so the colors are the color used in this ramp. So you can really inject whatever you want and you can inject in the night lights or in the water so if you have uh, emissive uh, color for the water you can see that in the water and you can also inject that in the albedo so like uh, this um, I, uh, I already have pretty yellow stuff so i will change the color it will be more visible uh, like this if i inject in the albedo and do render Okay, so you see the small lights around here. It's uh, that injection. The painting spread is basically how far you will go for the, the painting on the terrain. And the last slider, uh, the roughness, is uh, how shiny you want to have your features. If you want to have them very shiny, or if you just want to have them more uh, more mate uh, it really depends on the what they are exactly <coughs> this uh, feature can also be affected by some layers like uh, the sediment layer so if i add sediment here you can basically tell also if you want sediment on features or not so uh, here I can make that more part of the natural growth of uh, let's say uh, vegetation and uh, 
all the stuff like that or you can uh, say I don't want anything on the features I want to keep that uh, clean and uh, it will be okay like that okay so it's uh, quite powerful because you can have different uh, different time of type of object uh, if you use um, just a section of your planet it can be even more details if you want to do some very nice uh, snapshots it's pretty useful you have uh, lots of different models available uh, in the in the DLC uh, for instance you have uh, structures uh, like uh, like this or even uh, better you have stuff like the, this uh, dome over here it's better uh, converted to linear that one and uh, if you inject in the light night lights you will have something pretty cool here Let's see so you get you get the ID uh, it's of course better when you are in higher resolution you have lots of details over here pretty cool and of course you can create your own uh, features pretty easily if you get the DLC you will have also some uh, substance designer uh, files with some uh, models like the previous one not this one but some of the previous one uh, I've used the fan will be available the this one and uh, lots of other like uh, all the cities and the rocks uh, formation and uh, some other buildings as example so you can basically use that as a base and then uh, create your own or improve what's already available you can find also a, a couple of samples in the in the new samples.1.2 uh, file with the planet features like uh, this one which is also using the new atmospheric uh, render I will talk about that in the next uh, video and uh, the other ones are uh, this one over here with the kind of uh, peaks or mountains like that so you can uh, change the way they are spawned and uh, you see it's quite nicely blending with the, the, the rest of the planet and the last one is uh, this one which is a more uh, local thing it's uh, it's a city in a partial uh, terrain sample okay so that's it for the the features uh, next video will be on the on the shader and on the the atmospheric render